Which sheet of foam wants to be a Boba Fett helmet today? Oh look, that one already has the pattern on it. Let's get to work. First thing I'll do is rough cut all of these pieces. We recently hit half a million subscribers, which is really kind of mind blowing. Uh, every time we hit a big milestone here on YouTube, we do a community project. So at 100,000, we did Malcolm Reynolds gun from Firefly. At 250, we had our friend Jonah design a really cool dagger, the Makande dagger, and uh, we built that. Uh, and then for this one, we're doing this Boba Fett helmet, and the idea is these patterns are free. You can go download them. The link's down below. Uh, viewers can build this, build along with me, and then send me a clip of your final project that we will then share along with everyone else's build. Uh, if you want to participate, we'll have a link down in the description. In the blog post for this video, it's super duper fun. You'll have a, a month or two to build it. All the details are down below. This one that I'm cutting out right now is the classic Boba Fett, but I've also included a pattern for the new Mandalorian helmet from the new show. If that's the one that you want to make, go for it. In fact, you can make any Mandalorian helmet using just these base patterns. With my patterns, I usually make just the left side or the right side, and then when you're tracing them out, you can just trace one of them, flip it over, trace the other one, saves on printing paper and making a bunch more patterns. The pieces that I'm cutting out right now are all meant to make the base form of my helmet. This is the form that everything else will be attached to. Uh, there are other pieces like the ear covers that I'm not doing yet. Those will be cut out of different foam. So I'm holding off on those, just doing these major parts here out of this 10 millimeter foam, but floor mats would work just fine too. It's about the same thickness. One of the coolest things about Mandalorians, of course, is that they have this sort of base style that you can customize and there are so many different characters, and I'm sure everyone has their favorite. Uh, Boba Fett, the classic. Uh, Jango Fett, his daddy. Uh, Sabine's probably a good favorite. Actually, what's your favorite Mandalorian? Please let me know in the comments. I want to know which one speaks to you. Maybe you have your own custom Mandalorian, and that's your favorite. All of my pieces are now rough cut so that they're a little bit easier to manage, and now I want to cut them all to the line. Got my knife here, nice and sharp to do all my cutting. Uh, you can do every single cut on this using only a sharp knife, uh, just like that. You just wanna make sure that you don't tilt the blade too much because then you'll get an unwanted bevel. There we go, cut that out. Now, those are all nice perpendicular straight cuts like that, except for some of these that I've marked with a dotted line. And on the pattern, I have the same thing. I want an inner bevel on this one, which means I wanna cut the bevel under it as opposed to over it, like that. This piece here needs a bevel on the outside, which means I need to cut it like so. And of course, you can totally do that with a knife. However, I have my bandsaw set up, so I'm gonna do the cuts over there. Actually, I'm gonna do all my cuts over there and then finish it with my bevels. Time to cut some bevels, my dotted lines. And one of the reasons why I love doing foam work on a bandsaw is I can tilt the bed. I can tilt it to exactly the angle I want, in this case around 40 degrees, which should be around there. I don't know, I can't see the, the gauge, but I can tighten it and then I can do all those cuts and they will be perfect. The next step in our transformation is to take these parts that are flat, give them a little bit of a three-dimensional bend to them. We're gonna heat form them. Let's start with this guy. Just heat it up a little bit, just enough to make it a little more pliable. And then I'll use my foam anvil to give it more of that domed form that we want out of the helmet. We don't have to get it all the way there, 
just give it a little bit of help so that when we glue it all together, it makes that roundish form a lot easier, like that. Hmm. This is one of those steps I'm always tempted to skip for time, but I've never regretted doing it. It's always so helpful to have a little bit of that form built right into our piece there. I used a heat gun for this. The heat gun gets plenty hot, much hotter than a, a hair dryer. I have a hair dryer here I use for drying paint quickly and for drying my beard. And it gets warm, but not warm enough. You don't want to burn it. You got to get it warm, but not so hot that it burns. Doesn't take much. You also don't want to burn yourself, so, you know, be careful. There we go. The cheek pieces here, I'm going to keep those flat for now. We'll assemble these later. It's a little weird. We'll get to it. I like to do assemblies in small subgroups, so I'll do each half of the helmet by itself, but even smaller groups, I'll put these together, I'll put these together, and then I'll put these together, and then I'll work from there. For putting all my parts together, I'm gonna to use a contact cement here, so I've gotta brush it on both sides. Also, this stuff is pretty toxic, so I have the correct respirator to wear. I'll put that on in just a second. Uh, really, what I wanna do is just get a good, not too goopy layer of glue put on each of these edges, and then you gotta let it dry for a good five minutes. So what I'll do is I'll glue up this piece, leave it there to dry, go glue up another couple of pieces, and then do my assembly. The contact cement is not shiny anymore, which means it's ready to go. Uh, now I just stick these two edges together and make sure my registration marks line up. I can squish the foam a little bit if I have to to get it to work just like that. And those will stick permanently. <laughs> awesome. Something funny was going on here. These didn't quite line up perfectly, but I put it together anyway. And then I went to attach this piece and my registration lines were way off. Then I realized that I'm building the left side, and this is the piece for the right side. Normally, I put an L or an R right there so that I know which side is which, but I was in a hurry and I didn't do that, so I goofed it up. Uh, so this has to come apart. This is a fresh seam, I can totally take it apart. I have some thinner here. Uh, it's really nasty stuff, so I'm gonna make sure I have my respirator on for that. Ooh, just like that, it comes right off. Whoop. I don't want to rip the foam, being gentle here. There we go. We're going to try again. Now I can combine all of my sub-assemblies, just like we put all the other parts together, just sticking it together with contact cement. What's cool, though, is as you start putting together bigger and bigger chunks, the three-dimensional form starts taking shape. And this is really kind of the magic trick when it comes to using EVA foam. The flexibility of it lets you do this by hand. And the seams, the way the seams are cut and put together, it creates this domed 3D shape. Next part is the sort of side panel here. Nice and easy to stick together, nothing complicated. Most of the helmet form is ready to go, but we gotta tackle these weird cheek things. And I'll show you how I do it. It's a little weird. Uh, these have been pre-formed a little bit with heat and I put the glue on. So we're ready to stick everything down. That's gonna get carefully and slowly attached. And I'm not worrying about it being stuck on the back. I just wanna make sure this edge is nice and lined up. W once we fold all that together, it'll It'll work a little bit better, but we don't want to have to clean this edge up later. One of the great things about foam is that, like, if these two don't line up, those two uh, registration lines, I can just just stretch the foam a little bit, and then I need the bottom to, to line up. I can just sort of scrunch it up. Oh, look at that. It's almost like I designed it to work that way, and I didn't just fudge it at the end. <laughs> uh, but now I can, I can press that closed and that'll help this get that indent that we want. Next is the, the inner cheek part here. 
And uh, this part's pretty like hands-on. You gotta get a little rough with it. Uh, the contact cement will want to stick if it touches anywhere that you are not working. So you want to make sure that it's not preemptively touching down. Just line up the registration like we did with everything else. Okay. And now I can try and press it all together. And that's our weird uh, cheek thing. And we'll glue it down to the helmet. But uh, the sort of byproduct of all of this manipulation is that this edge is no longer straight and this one is no longer straight. So we can fix that before we attach it to the helmet, but I'm pretty happy with that. This is gonna get it attached right there, but before then, I wanna clean up this edge so it's nice and smooth, remove some of this extra material. For that, rotary tool with a sanding bit is gonna be your best friend. Let's do this. On the inside, there's just a little bit of extra material here, not necessary to remove unless you want the inside to be pretty too, and I do. Time to attach this. I glued everything up, a little glue on the top there uh, along this edge, and a little bit of glue on that part right there. I can very carefully stick it all together. Uh, let's get that top part locked down. And just like on the inner cheek part, I'm really just concerned with getting the edge of the seam to touch and line up as well as I can with those registration lines. Close enough. Kind of flatten out that little nub in there. And now that bevel, I can, I can close it. Just like that. And that creates the, the indent on the cheek here. I'll just go around that edge and press it together really hard to make sure that it's nice and stuck down. But that's half a Boba Fett helmet, just about anyway. This is a critical step, putting the two halves together. I put my contact cement on both sides. In fact, I put two layers and I let it dry for a couple minutes in between them, just to make sure I have a really strong bond on this last seam here. And just like always, I am taking my time, make sure everything is as lined up as possible. We do have seams that aren't too bad. We will tackle those in a little bit, clean them up a bit. But we wanna give ourselves as good a chance uh, as possible to making that look nice and smooth. So I'm taking my time. Hurt. Looks good to me. Oh. <laughs> Actually, wait, I can put it on. Oh. Yay! Bring me to Captain Solo and the Wookiee. That, I know that's not the line from Empire. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of right now. Anyway, now all I have to do is tweak the form a little bit and we can move on to the next step. Got my heat gun out again. We're gonna do a little bit more forming. Uh, this cheek needs to be rounded a little more, so I'll do that. And then anywhere that looks a little lumpy, I can just kind of heat form it. Oh, you do want to be careful if you heat up your glued seams too much, they'll start coming apart, so be gentle. All right. I'm trying to get the curve down here to match the curve up here. So getting that curve to match this curve if you're looking at it from the top like that. I'm getting it pretty close. Uh, there will be a sheet of plastic in here the visor, and that will be like the final way I can lock this into position. I'm just getting it a little closer. Got a reference image here, and I'm looking at how far apart these need to be. Uh, and then I think what I'll do, got a piece of duct tape here, is just tape it into position so that it kind of stays like that while I continue to work on this. Going with a couple of pieces of tape here, because I think these these two edges should be parallel. Now this this needs to be a little better. We'll fix it. <laughs> to fix that edge, I have another piece of tape, just some masking tape here, and I'm going to use that to mask off where that new cut is going to be, the new sort of straighter edge. And I'm, and I'm again comparing it to my reference to make sure that it's in the right spot. 
Uh, but once that's down, I can just trace with a marker whoop, and remove all that. Trimming off the excess here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll come in and clean it up with the rotary tool. But that's that's what we're going for right there. Oh yeah. Oh that does look nice. At this point it gets super handy if you've got a head form to put your helmet on while you're working. And you have some options like this life cast. This is a life cast of my twin brother, looks just like me, rather handsome. You'll need some friends and a bunch of materials to make it, but they're really useful and super sturdy for years and years. Or you can buy a life cast or a head form. This is from Monster Makers, it's plastic, and it comes ready to go. You can put your helmet on that. But I have another option that I think is pretty cool. This is a head form made out of foam. I designed this and I have a pattern for it. It's just a few bucks over in our store. You'll have to supply your own foam and glue, but the pattern is used to put together this generic head form so that you can work on your helmets. I mentioned cleaning up seams earlier and I'm gonna do that now with some caulk. This is an air drying uh, putty you would normally use in like your bathroom to seal your tub or whatever. I'm using it to seal my seams. And just putting a little bit in there with this little spatula to fill that seam so that it looks all nice and smooth. All I'm doing is making sure I get enough of it in there and then I'll smooth it all nice like. To finish smoothing it, I just have some water just wet down my finger and I can carefully smooth this all out. This is kind of like what you would do with Bondo. You can't really use Bondo because it's so rigid and this foam is not. But this is kind of like that and this is kind of like sanding. It's not as seamless as you can get with like a rigid material, but for foam this works really well. I went a little overboard and pretty much went over every seam. It's really up to you how much you want to fix up your seams. Uh, if you don't want to do any of this at all, that's up to you. This stuff will actually shrink a little bit when it dries. So you may find that you want to do a second pass of filling like tomorrow, but I think this will be good for me. Okay, I think I should let that dry. Good morning. It's time to get some more work done on the helmet. The filler did a pretty good job of, of filling in those seams. Uh, good enough anyway for me. There's some of these just sort of goobers here, these crud, this crud from uh, wiping it on there and I have some 220 grit sandpaper just to sort of smooth that out. I can't sand this perfectly flush, it just won't work. The foam and the, the caulk are just far too flexible. But I can smooth out just a little bit of rough texture there. So I'm just gonna go over the whole helmet and then and add some more details. Details like the trim and the ear pieces on the side, and of course, the iconic rangefinder. And then I make all those parts out of foam.
Got most of our detail pieces added to Boba Fett here and they're looking pretty great. There's one more very important piece that's gonna go right here. I'm talking about his range finder and I wanna make it be able to flop down. And I think I'm gonna use magnets. Well, I'm gonna try anyway. This is the rangefinder part here, and I think that the stem portion here, I think I can put magnets in that so that I can make it removable and also so it can rotate. We'll see if that works. Uh, I definitely need to make this out of something more rigid than EVA foam. Uh, it's gotta be able to hold its own weight up. So I'm gonna use PVC plastic. It's a quarter inch thick, it's a foamed PVC plastic, and it is plenty rigid enough for this guy. This plastic, you can definitely cut it with a knife, but especially with this quarter inch stuff, cutting it with a bandsaw is definitely the way to go. I cut everything a little wide, I can use this belt sander to get it down to the line. There we go, that looks respectable. That'll end up over here and pivoting like that. Here's my magnets, they're about a quarter inch in diameter and I think I'm gonna stack two of them up to fill the full thickness of that. To drill it, I've just got a Forstner bit here and I'm gonna go all the way through. Now hopefully those magnets are nice and snug in there. Let's see. Oh yeah, super snug. To keep those in there, I'm gonna go with super glue. This is all kind of gnarly too. I'll just sand it nice and flat before we install it. There we go, and then the magnets that are in the helmet should hold it so that we can position it. The rest of the pieces are gonna be made out of foam, just like everything else. Uh, this, I, I hope this works. I planned it to work where I put magnets in the middle of this to hold that, and uh, it all gets layered together. So there should be a magnet in there, or there will be to hold that. And then another magnet on this guy to hold it from the other side. And then hopefully that provides enough friction for this to sort of stay it put when I don't want it to move. We'll find out pretty soon. Uh, this part here is gonna go on the bottom and to get it as thick as I needed it, I actually glued two pieces of foam together. So this is a 10 millimeter piece and a four millimeter piece to get it to the right thickness. Now I can cut it out. First layer can go together. I just used some contact cement to secure it. Um, and now I noticed that when I put this on here, the, uh, the plastic is a little thinner than the foam. So I think I'm gonna use a rotary tool to just take a little bit of material off the top here. There we go, that's a little more flush and it should be more snug when I put this on there so that there's a little more friction. This is the part on top, and I'm just gluing the back of it down. Uh, I traced out the area where it will connect to this fella here using my template. That way I don't get any glue here where the uh, rangefinder stem needs to move. If I get a bunch of glue in there, it'll probably keep it from wanting to move. I very nearly glued these together without installing the magnets, so I'm gonna do those now before I join them together. And these are just quarter inch uh, diameter. So I've got a quarter inch Forstner bit here. And I don't want to punch all the way through. But I do want to make enough room for the magnet. And I poked a hole with my patterns, with my awl, so I know exactly where the center of that needs to go. Just like that. And then I want to make sure that these go in the proper orientation. So this is definitely 
the orientation this stem needs to be in. So that magnet needs to go in there. And I should just be able to super glue it. I can put a little bit of this accelerant on my magnet to make sure that it wants to stay once it goes in. And then I should just be able to do that. There we go. Do that on both sides. Whoops. Give me that back. Do that on both sides and hopefully we're good. So that's that side. This side goes in like that. Oh, you stay in there. Now I can glue everything together. There's no turning back after this. Cool. And then this goes in here. Just like that. <laughs> Look at that. It works exactly how I planned it. That never happens. <laughs> Check it out, ready? Ooh. And it's removable. I trimmed the middle of the, this part of the pattern out so I know where to cut my bevel. I need to add a bevel around this just like I did on the other ear parts. I'm always careful, says the man with a big band-aid on his finger. <laughs> Now, this part can go on like that. And then this part can go here. However, before I can glue it down, I need to remove a little material from the back because there's this gap here. This is the edge. I'm just going to score it like that. That looks good. And then I need to cut a slice off the back of this very carefully, about a two millimeter slice. I suppose this is something I could do on the bandsaw, but I'm going gonna, gonna to freehand it today because I'm feeling wild. Oh, I kind of broke through there. Flawless. Oh, there we go. I'll sand that a little bit more smooth, but now there's a little room for that two millimeter foam. Now I can stick this piece down. There we go. Of course, I need to check to make sure. Still works. Uh, last thing to make, I think, is just the eyepiece right here. The main part of the eyepiece here is um, at least like 20 millimeters thick, or really, it just needs to be thick enough so that I can attach the stem without it being proud. Now I do have this piece of 24 millimeter foam, but it's not quite thick enough. So I've got some four millimeter foam to stick down to it. And that'll make one 28 millimeter chunk. I think anywhere around 30 millimeters will be about fine. And you can glue any number of different thicknesses of foam together to get there. Kind of hard to tell, but the uh, front of this, uh, there's a there's a, a, a V. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but I got to remove a little material on the front of this, right there and right around there. Yeah, it's about it's about good. I can clean that up with a rotary tool. There we go. That's what we're going for right there. Next bit is this little inner sort of bit here. Looks like in the reference it's a different material, but I'll just paint it something different. So I'm going to Dremel that probably on both sides. To really highlight that edge from that bevel, I'm going to score it. I've got a really sharp knife and I'm only going down about a millimeter into the surface and I'm going all the way around the outline of this bevel back to where it meets on this little trench and then the magic happens.
That's one of my very favorite tricks. Just score it and hit it with a heat gun. This little foam piece is the last part of our eyepiece. And I'm just gonna super glue that little buddy right down there. There we go. And then the stem can be attached. I'm gonna use super glue for this as well. You need to make sure this is on the bottom. It goes there. I'm, I'm saying this as much for your benefit as mine, just so I know for sure that's how it's gonna be. Lots of super glue. I also have this super glue accelerant that should kick it off as soon as it touches down so that we can get on with our lives. There we go. Eyepiece, rangefinder. Looks like there's a couple of little holes in the front of this thing and I just have this little round cutting bit and I'm gonna carve those out super fast. That'll do. Perfect. Now, 99% of his life, Boba Fett leaves this thing up. But when he needs to know how far something away is from his face, he's got his rangefinder. This part here, I think, is all done and ready for sealing, but the rest of the helmet needs a little more attention to detail before we can seal it. This piece of two millimeter foam I stuck on there is a little proud, so I can remove some of that. Just have a sharp knife to handle most of it. Uh, and then obviously this part of the bottom is a little bit long. I can trim that short. These cuts are a little rough, but that's all right. I'm gonna go over this with a rotary tool to really clean it up. That looks pretty great. And while I'm at it, any exposed edge like this that's still a nice rough 90 degree cut, I'm gonna round those over too. Next step is heat sealing, and you can see that I've glued a piece over the mouth portion temporarily. That's just to hold it right in the position where I wanna keep it. Uh, and then when I'm heat sealing it, I can do a little bit of correcting on the form. It's basically the last chance to do that. The heat sealing will seal the outer layer of foam. This is especially useful anywhere where you've done a lot of sanding and it's really fuzzy. The heat will tighten up that surface and leave a texture that's a lot more desirable for painting and for further sealing. Whoa, hold on. I almost forgot to put the dent on his helmet. Boba Fett has this iconic dent right there on the helmet. I'm gonna rough it in and figure out kind of where it's gonna go. And then I think what I'll end up doing is using the rotary tool to sculpt most of that material away. And it's okay if it's a little rough because, let's face it, it's a wacky looking dent. Okay, this is the, the very last part, I promise. There are a couple little triangles. Cut right in there with a sharp knife. And then, since this is foam, that little spot in the middle there, I can just rip it right out using something like a pair of pliers. Let's give this a try. Like that, and... Oops. That looks okay. I think I can remove a little more. Yeah, there we go. That's the last step. Now, now we're ready to seal it. I am sealing all of my foam with FlexBond. It's a PVA, uh, like Mod Podge, and we bought some a while ago and I haven't used it yet, so I'm giving it a shot. Uh, it air dries, uh, and I'm just brushing it on with a sponge brush so that hopefully I don't get a ton of brush strokes left over. So the goal with this sealant and most sealants is really about having a lot of control over the texture of your final piece. And foam tends to have sort of a foam-like texture, like a fuzziness to it, especially anywhere like these spots here where I cut it and then I sanded it. It's got that fuzziness to it. So when we seal it, we're taking back control of that texture. We're giving it a texture that we find more desirable or more like the thing we're trying to replicate. Uh, a lot of times you can sand it, so we're hoping that once this dries, we can sand it a little bit. And again, that's just to get it down to a smoother texture. That's what it's all about. That's what sealing, the sealing game is really about. It's about texture. It's also about uh, how paint gets absorbed. So the raw foam tends to soak up more paint and can leave a look that is not desirable. All right, that looks pretty good for a first layer. Uh, now to let it dry. All right. 
Our uh, flex bond is dried. I left it overnight. Uh, it still has like a sort of a rubbery feel to it, like your your finger sort of sticks to it as it goes. It is fully dried, uh, but because it is flexible, it is hard to sand. I am giving it a shot though. Now, the there are brush strokes, and that's mostly what I want to try and get rid of. I'm not going to be able to get rid of all of them with sandpaper. This type of sealing just doesn't allow for that. But that's okay, I'm just doing the best I can. So one area might have some brush strokes on it, and then I'm gonna go over it with just some 220 grit sandpaper to sort of knock down the, the highest spots and get it a little bit smoother. Using something like a PVA to seal your foam work is uh, usually a really good option. It's fairly cheap, really quick, it's non-toxic, air drying, it's fantastic. But there are a lot of different ways you could seal your foam. Uh, with varying levels of results. So you could use something like epoxy to create a nice hard shell around the whole thing and then you can sand it to a super smooth finish. In fact, why don't we go look at the Mandalorian helmet I'm making, see how that goes. I'm also putting together the Mandalorian helmet and I've got patterns for this for free as well, if that's the helmet you wanna build. I'm gonna seal this a little differently than Boba Fett though. I mix up some Epsilon Pro, which is an epoxy, and I'm gonna use that to seal the whole surface. This provides a more rigid surface that can be sanded really, really smooth. A Little more expense and a little more work, but the results are pretty great. Our epoxy is fully cured, I let it sit overnight in a warm environment, it's nice and fully cured. Although I do think the first layer I put on was a little thin, I'll probably have to put a couple on, but first I'm gonna sand it and get rid of any of the really obnoxious stuff, like any fuzzy bits, anywhere that a little piece of my foam brush stuck down, or anywhere that there are drips. And I tried really hard not to get drips, but sometimes it happens. Starting with some 220 grit sandpaper and as I scratch up the surface, you, you can see there's a big old drip right there. Now, I wanna sand that down carefully because I don't wanna chew all the way through the uh, epoxy, especially on a thinner spot up here. So I will carefully work this away until it's all super smooth and flat. That drip is just about gone. There we go. So now all I have to do is that to the rest of the helmet to get it all nice and smooth. And then I think I'm gonna seal it again and sand it again. That looks pretty fantastic. I do want to let it dry, which is great, because I got to go work on the Boba Fett helmet a little bit more. This is looking pretty good. Uh, I didn't want to sand it too aggressively, because it's possible to sand right through the finish and then have more of the fuzzy foam below. So I tried to not do that, and it looks pretty good. I do think, though, if I gave it a couple good layers of Plasti Dip, uh, that should help the surface texture be a little more uniform. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I am now the proud owner of two Mandalorian helmets, a foam Boba Fett and a foam Mandalorian helmet, and it's almost time to paint them, but wanted to take a moment to showcase the two different sealing techniques we used on these helmets. The Boba Fett was done with a PVA. We used Flex Bond on this one. And this one we used an epoxy. It was Epsilon Pro. The epoxy is uh, needs to be mixed and it cures uh, much more rigid and sandable than this guy over here, than the PVA. The downside to that is it's more expensive. It takes a lot more time, but it gives you a lot more control over the surface finish. This helmet needs to be shiny, so I was able to sand it pretty smooth. Now, my Boba Fett helmet is a little bit different, and you can still see some of the texture on there. That PVA, while it is fast to apply and pretty cheap, does not sand very well. I did my best, but you can still see some of the brush strokes on it. That's just kind of how it's gonna be. 
and I'm okay with it. I could have done a little better on my seams. I should have used my rotary tool to sand those flush before sealing. I was hoping that putting some caulk on those uh, seams would clean them up. And if I had done a couple more layers, it might have worked, but the one layer I put on there did not hide them perfectly. But again, that's okay. We're gonna finish up Boba Fett here and he's gonna look fantastic. It's time to paint Boba Fett's helmet here and it's fairly complicated. So I've collected all my paints ahead of time. The paints I'm using here are acrylic paints and I'm going to apply them with my airbrush. It means I'm gonna to have to do a bunch of different layers and a lot of different masking between all of them. To keep everything straight, I've listed all of my colors in the order I will be applying them. That way I don't get it wrong later. Uh, these paints, uh, I'm not sure, will cover the black plastic dip, so the first step will be to put down one layer of primer. There we go. It took a couple of days of masking and airbrushing, but all of the sort of base colors on Boba Fett are all done. While I was working on that, I also painted the Mandalorian helmet. First thing I did was buff all of the primer using a Scotch-Brite pad to get it ready for paint. With the surface prepped, I airbrushed on a couple of good layers of a glossy black acrylic paint, and I let that dry thoroughly, at least overnight. For the metallic finish, I went for some graphite powder. This is the same thing we used with our buddy Eric Jones a while back to do some swords. I used a piece of paper towel to apply the powder to my black shiny surface. That powder was massaged into the paint until it ended up being super duper shiny. I put that all over the entire helmet and then to protect that finish, I used a couple of good coats of aqua gloss out of my airbrush. Now the whole helmet looks like it's the same exact color except for this piece on the back, which I painted with a slightly lighter shade of silver. And that is what I ended up with, a pretty shiny looking Mandalorian helmet. Only thing left to do is to put in the visor and do a little bit of weathering, but we'll get to that in a little bit because I have a lot more hand painting to do here on Boba Fett. Boba Fett's helmet is really beat up and it's clear that it's had many layers of paint that have chipped away and various uh, at various times. What I'm doing is trying to recreate that and trying to match these colors. Now I'm sure someone's got like a really good list of the Pantone colors for Boba Fett out there. So if you're really picky, you could totally just go find that. But I mix these up by eye and they're eh, close enough for me. And then I'm just painting them on in the order, um, the, the, the deepest inner layer, if this was being chipped down. So I've got this sort of like tan gray that I'm doing and then other layers will go on top of it. Uh, and I'm just eyeballing the placement of all of these um, based on my reference image down here, uh, which is to say I'm guessing a lot, but that's okay. On this particular project, I am not striving for screen accuracy. The next color on this part is this kind of faded green. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing a little bit of stippling uh, and not overlapping the layer I just did. The same color is being used on the top dome here, and you can see I actually ripped up some of the paint with my masking. Uh, probably I didn't let it dry for long enough. But fortunately, this paint chipping can go right over it, and no one will ever know. This is the very definition of hiding your crimes in the prop-making sense of the word. This layer is just black, and uh, most of this is actually gonna get covered by gray and silver later, and this will just be sort of peeking out from behind those other colors. 
Next layer is gray, and I'm going right over all the spots I did all that black on and covering most of it, but leaving a little bit peeking through on the edges. I realized that I never did these yellow stripes, so I just knocked out a quick stencil using masking tape. It's about, let's say, just under eight inches long and about an inch and an eighth tall. If you want to try and recreate your own, I'm going to peel it up and see if I can get it to stick to my helmet. That's pretty satisfying. That's really satisfying. <laughs> uh, it goes, starts just a little bit below his dent. Got the stencil laid down. I had to trim the top of each of these so that it would taper a little bit to lay flat, but it looks pretty good. And then I have a stippling brush to apply my yellow paint. I'm doing this to get nice even coverage, but also I can miss spots on purpose to make it look like that paint has chipped off. And now the fun part. Whoop. I got a little bleed, a little bleed through there. That's all right. I have a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on the end of this cotton swab, and I'm gently just getting rid of some of that paint that snuck under my uh, masking tape there. You want to be careful. If you go too much, you'll start chewing through the green, but that's had like three days to dry, so it's a little more durable. I'm adding the silver layer now. Same way I'm doing everything else, uh, but I am actually looking at my reference picture because this is a little more selective than everything else. So I'm just trying to not match it directly, but you know, kind of get an idea for where all the little dings and dents ought to go based on that reference there. This, uh, this head form that I made is working out awesome. This is the one that I made out of foam. Let's show you. This thing is really, really great. Uh, we've got the pattern, like I said, over on our website at punishprops.com slash shop. If you want to get the pattern for just a few bucks, make your own head form or make a bunch for your whole family. They're super useful. If you're heading over to punishprops.com anyway, you were checking out the shop. We have a bunch of other wonderful stuff over there. We have a lot of good digital goods, some other patterns. I have a basic helmet pattern for just a couple of bucks. That's fantastic. Uh, we also have our ebooks and we've got uh, premium videos uh, for some additional learning. All sorts of really great stuff over there that's worth checking out. If you haven't already, head on over there for just a couple minutes just to see what we've got available because odds are we've got something that's perfect for you on your maker journey. Of course, the dent needs to be all silver. Well, it's not the most stunning Boba Fett paint job, but it is the first one I've ever done it, and I'm proud of it. Uh, I do want to let this dry. I put a lot of paint on this today, uh, and then a clear coat to protect this thing because I think I want to do a dark wash over all of it to sort of mute these colors a little bit. It is time for one of the last steps. I'm doing a little bit of weathering just to wash over this whole thing. Some black acrylic paint, I've got some brown acrylic paint, and I got some water. Uh, basically, the, like, this looks great, I'm really happy with it, but I think the colors are just a little too vibrant and I want to mute it a little bit, get a little grime down in all the crevices. Nice and watered down. And then we smear it all over our helmet. Whee! Yeah, let's just cover everything. This is the fun part. And then I'm using a, a towel, it's got some nice texture on it. I'm, I guess, dabbing it a little bit so that I get a little bit of a uneven finish on there and then I can loosely wipe it away and get a little bit more than just a flat color on there. There's a little bit of texture. This is the part I've already weathered, nice and grimy and dirty. This part down here hasn't had the wash yet. You can see it's just a very flat green on most of it and uh, it's a little more vibrant, a little higher uh, color intensity. So by weathering it, I can knock that back a little bit, make it look a little less cartoony. Also looks a little dirty, like it's been in the real world for a long time. This is coming together pretty great. I'm excited. This is one of my favorite steps. <laughs> While I have a minute, I need to thank the members of the Extra Credit Club. The support we get from you guys literally keeps the roof over our heads and pays our employees. So thank you so much for the support. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun over there. We do uh, behind the scenes vlogs and build updates every single week that are exclusive just for the members of the Extra Credit Club. Anyone can join. You can join on Patreon or right here on YouTube. 
and that'll get you access to all the old content we've done for the last couple of years, uh, as well as anything new we make. Like I said, we do that every week. Actually, for this project here, I was doing a lot of prototyping in the month leading up to it. For example, here is my prototype helmet. This is what I use to figure out the pattern for this. And the discussion on this helmet as it progressed was documented through our logs and build discussions over on the Extra Credit Club. So if that sounds like something interesting that you want to jump in on, uh, get a little extra from us every week and help us out big time, then uh, head on over to the link down in the description so you know how to join. Thanks again for the support, you guys. We couldn't do it without you. That is it for the wash on Boba Fett here. He looks pretty dirty, but maybe he just crawled out of the Sarlacc pit. I'm going to set him aside. We have a little more work to do, but before then, I need to add the weathering to the Mandalorian helmet. Uh, and I'm going to use a different paint on this one. I have some oil paints for the weathering here. These are actually water mixable oil paints, which is awesome because I can thin them with water to help spread them out a little bit in my weathering process. So I just have black and brown here. Probably going to lean mostly on the brown. We're basically doing the same thing as we did with the acrylic paints on Boba Fett. Uh, but with the oil paints, you have more time to work with them because they take weeks to dry. Uh, but also, uh, it's got this really wonderful, like waxy, greasy quality that gives you a lot of opportunity to sort of manipulate this after it's been put down. Uh, and it looks like grease and grime. So if you want to do something mechanical that looks like it's been greased over time or accumulating liquid of some kind, these oil paints are really, really great. Uh, and they, they cling to the surface, so you have control over how much you take away, which I think is really great. And you get a really specific look. I think this makes it look like metal more than the, the, the metal paint, <laughs> adding a little bit of a slimy grease to it. Oh, hey, if this is the first video you've seen by us, then I recommend you hit that subscribe button. We do these videos all the time. We also have a huge back catalog of, I think, some 700 videos if you want to get into it. Uh, if you do subscribe, hit that notification bell, too. That's the way you know when we have new videos coming out. One of the very last things to add is the visor. This is a replacement visor for a mask for grinding. It's tinted. This is exactly what all of the Mandalorian cosplayers use, and I need to cut it down to size so that it fits in there. Start by jamming this in there and see if we can get an idea where it should go. Uh, we debated taking this part out. I'm gonna try leaving that in for now. Um, I don't want these to start sliding apart. I'm gonna loosely trace this. Uh, there is a protective film on the visor, so I can draw on it in case you're worried. And I'll trim it oversized so I don't accidentally remove too much, although I did buy an extra one. Just using some tin snip to cut this. Uh, scissors might work, but they'd have to be some pretty beefy scissors. This little piece of plastic here I am keeping. I don't know what I'll use this for. Maybe nothing, but I'm keeping it. That'll go right around there. And I think that looks all right. It'll fit a little better once I remove that carefully. So I don't damage my paint job. I would hate to have to repaint something now. Finally time to remove the plastic protective coating. Yeah! Since I'm going to hot glue this down, I want to scratch up the edges so that hot glue has a little something to grab onto. This glossy surface would not bond well with hot glue. Now the fun part. There's actually some text on here, so I want to make sure that's on the inside so we don't see it. Uh, and I should be able to just place it in there and then position it and then start kind of tacking it down with hot glue. But I want to make sure it's in the right place first before I commit to putting a bunch of hot glue in this thing. I'm going to secure the tips first, I think. I am uh, concerned with them being nice and parallel, so I'm going to do that first. But I'm only putting a little bit of hot glue on just to hold it in place while I position everything else. It needs to be about there. Now that I'm happy with where those are, I can 
lock down the sides. The visor is all installed and while I'm at it, I'm gonna put some foam in there just so that's a little more snug on my head. This is just some upholstery foam, nice and squishy stuff. Careful, it's a lot of hot goo right there. That'll go there and I'll put some on the sides too. Of course, I need to put the visor in my Mandalorian helmet too. And I wanna remind you that we have patterns for free for both of these helmets if you wanna make your own. And I recommend that you do. This is a really fun project. Uh, if you want to participate in our 500,000 subscriber project, we'll have details down below. I'm thinking I'll give you till the end of the year, the end of 2019, to get your project done. Uh, it's a fun one to like do with friends, or if you're looking for a project over the holidays, this would be really great. Uh, and I encourage participation because this was just a ton of fun to put together. And I can't wait to see how your helmet turns out. All done. Only one thing left to do. Time to become Boba Fett. But we need to need, but we need that. But when he needs to know how far something away, it's doing great. This is the last thing we have to film today. Start from the top. Start from the top. <laughs> First thing I'll do is rough cut. Oops, sorry, it flew away from me. I didn't cut it all the way through. I was hoping it would come apart. Ta-da. Got a click out of three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the end is plucked, of course it is. <laughs> it already stuck. Give me that. I'm gonna let this all dry and I definitely put I definitely put a fingerprint right there. That whoop. It's a good noise. All done. Only thing one left. Only thing one left to do. This is literally the last shot. I got this. Bring me Solo and the Wookiee. Again, I don't, I know Boba Fett doesn't say that. Sorry. <laughs>